Good afternoon. My name is John Majori. I'm the chair of the AIM Photonics Board of Officers. Um, thank you for coming today. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge uh, some special guests in the audience today, uh, starting with Congresswoman Louise Slaughter, who's been a true champion of AIM Photonics. <laughs> State Senator Joe Robach, Senator Rich Frunke, Assembly Member Peter Lawrence, County Executive Cheryl Dinolfo, Mayor Lovely Warren, and REDC Co-Chair Danny Wegman. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to get right down to business in a moment, but I wanted to uh, give everybody an opportunity to who's up on the dais with me to introduce themselves. Uh, Ryan. I'm uh, Dr. Ryan Ruffelli. I'm the Vice President, President for Research and Associate Provost at RIT. Uh, Rob Clark. I'm the Provost and Senior Vice President for Research at the University of Rochester. Ann Kress, President Monroe Community College. Uh, Andrew Cuomo. I'm an Associate of the Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Howard Zemsky, Associate of the Governor. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Duffy, Greater Rochester Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Mike Leo, CEO of AIM. <laughs> Uh, Neil Cipolla, Defense Department uh, Program Manager. Thank you very much. Um, before we get started, I'm going to just tell one very quick story. It's an absolutely true story. I was in Washington last week, and I uh, went on a completely unrelated uh, trip. And I, I met up with an old friend while I was there who introduced me to an acquaintance of his who turned out to be a high-level person at the uh, Optics Society of America, which is the leading professional organization for photonics and uh, for optics. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And um, I was introduced as being the governor's policy director, which is my day job, and uh, the per our mutual friend had no idea I was involved with this project. And she said, oh, Governor Cuomo, he's doing a really interesting project with the federal government uh, up in Rochester. And I said, Oh, you don't say. <laughs> I don't suppose you're talking about AIM Photonics. And she says, why, yes, I am. She said, the world is watching what you're doing in Rochester. And then I told her my involvement. But she's absolutely right. And the world's watching what we're doing today. So I'm very uh, proud to host my boss and the board here today. And we're going to get right down to business. The first, uh, the way this is going to work is um, uh, Chairman Zemsky is going to present the results of the competitive site selection process for the testing assembly and packaging facility he is, that ESD uh, commissioned. He's going to present that to this board. Um, after that presentation, we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to come back and uh, resume uh, the business of the board. So uh, without further delay, um, Howard Zemsky. That's all. great. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate it. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Great to be here. And on behalf of Empire State Development, um, you know, very proud to have been asked to participate in leading this, um, you know, site selection search. So thank you for that. Um, hold on. Let me see how I am with the technology. Good. 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 You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> very good. That looks just like you. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> As, as you all know, photonics uh, obviously has been a, a real strategic uh, driver for the Finger Lakes and for uh, your, all of your strategic planning. And this really is, I've spent so much time in Rochester the last two years, this is really in many ways the innovation capital of upstate New York because you have the most STEM degrees, you have the most patents, you have the most startup businesses. It's a really remarkable technology-driven economy and history. Um, so for many reasons, photonics obviously is well situated here. One of the first steps in bringing photonics to the Finger Lakes region is obviously the site, the TAP facility, which stands for testing, assembling, and packaging of photonic semiconductors. Uh, the facility is comprised of 22,000 square feet and it includes a number of different functions, clean rooms, state-of-the-art laboratories, office space, uh, and such. In August, uh, ESD selected Newmark Grubb Knight Frank through a competitive RFP process. 
to act as the independent site selector. And that process has been extremely independent, very thorough, very robust. We had a lot of submissions, which is great. You always want to have great participation in the community to present a lot of options, which we did have. And since September, we've conducted, uh, we've been in the market five days with uh, initial meetings, community orientation, the initial real estate assessments. Uh, we have done 10 site tours of different facilities, all those facilities that, um, you know, met the criteria from the initial submission, uh, ended up being uh, visited uh, in person. And there were over 30 stakeholder interviews as part of this process. So it was really one step at a time, very logical, very thorough, uh, very independent. And I think it was uh, done really uh, well. Um, the site selections were chosen based on a very comprehensive system of analysis that consisted of five major categories and 31 subcategories uh, to consider. So I've been, as many of you know, in commercial real estate myself for some time. Uh, this is as thorough a process and as detailed as a, pr a process as you could ask for. So it was uh, great to see how thorough uh, Newmark was. We considered operating costs, the kind of recurring operating costs. We considered, um, you know, the capital costs, the build out or fit out costs. The vast majority of the submitted sites were uh, deemed feasible. So out of 20 sites that submitted, uh, 16 met uh, the broad criteria of qualification. Uh, 16 uh, responded to an RFQ, and of those 16, 11 were deemed to be uh, finalists. And here are the 11 uh, the sites, 11 sites that responded to the RFQ. You can see uh, how broad uh, a response that we got throughout the greater Rochester area. I'll just leave that up for a second. And of course, there are a lot of criteria that we use, cost being one, quality being one, and again, with 31 subcategories, uh, it was, um, you know, it considered a broad range of qualitative and quantitative uh, data. And you can see the quality score is on the, I'll say the north-south axis and the uh, cost is on the east-west axis. The finalists, uh, after all is said and done, through all of the reviews, uh, the site visits, et cetera, came down to RIT and on semiconductor at Eastman Business Park. I won't get into detail of each one, but you can see they each had a number of uh, very strong characteristics. So we had a lot of, uh, we had very good options at the end of the day. Once we had the finalists, uh, we again visited and inspected the sites more thoroughly, analyzed and scrutinized the key points of each of the sites, uh, reviewed the costs, the capital build out and fit out and operating costs, and then established lease terms and conditions for the sites. And after all that, we are announcing our recommendation to site the nation's first TAP facility at, isn't there any music? Bum, right? da, da, <laughs> drum roll, please. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> so, I see that you're pleased with this selection, which is good, and hope maybe some of you are surprised. The thing about this process is, you know, we got so many great responses, we really didn't know on the front end exactly who was gonna respond, and that's exactly what you want. So we had 
Again, 20. I want to just point out a few, a few things uh, as part of this process before I turn it over to the chair. Um, this was, again, very independent. I think you can see that, uh, the amount of time this took and the fact that we went through a competitive search to identify Newmark and the fact that we really let them completely unhindered, uh, very thorough process uh, come to this, help us come to this conclusion. It's important to note that this process will save New York State taxpayers at least $10 million in terms of where we ended up versus the original cost estimates. So we're very pleased with that. And again, the more competition and the more sites that participated, the better our deal was at the end of the day. Um, on has an existing operating clean room, which is important, that allows AIM Photonics to meet the technical and timing requirements of Department of Defense for the initiative to be successful. So we're very pleased with that. And of course, this site is in Eastman Business Park, which has been another very strong strategic focus of the Finger Lakes area and a very strong strategic focus of the governor um, now for many years. Uh, and he has um, always talked about Eastman Business Park uh, as a strategic site to see more manufacturing and more economic activity. And I think there is now maybe twice the number of companies that were there only five or six years ago. So. Great to see the continued growth of Eastman Business Park it meets one of the governor's key objectives, and it proves to be a perfect spot for this TAP facility for uh, AIM Photonics. So with that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Howard. Uh, at this time, I would like to invite uh, the comments of uh, Bob Duffy, who amongst his other hats is the uh, chair of the AIM Photonics Leadership Council. Thank you, John. I uh, want to start by thanking Howard Zemsky uh, and his great team at ESD, uh, Vinny Esposito, Owner Crown, and his team here uh, for all their support and appreciate very much. He's a huge asset to the governor. Uh, I'll get back to the governor in a minute, but I want to thank Governor Cuomo because uh, every time the governor comes, it's always good news, and today is another good news day and a great day for Rochester. Uh, to all the, the teammates and many people in this room who made this possible, I start with our federal delegation led by Congresswoman Slaughter who's here and our entire delegation, our elected officials, U of R, RIT, MCC, and, and our state delegation, everybody who worked hard to make this happen. Uh, it is a great day. Uh, but I have a little perspective here because I go back a few years with the governor. I've watched what this man has done for the state and for this region. And you can't convince me that upstate New York, and specifically Rochester, has ever had the attention uh, before Governor Cuomo came to office. And looking back at what has happened over the last four to six years, it is, it is phenomenal. Uh, it is changing before our very eyes. Uh, there is a transformation going on. Uh, by my math, in the last two years, if you add up three top uh, awards for the REDC contest, the URI, AIM Photonics, a number of other uh, investments. I think Rochester does have its billion dollars, uh, and at least that. And that's come from this governor, and that money that's being that's going to be invested is going to be a huge part of the transformation here. Uh, kudos to Danny Wegman and Ann Kress, and before Ann, Joel Seligman for their leadership in the regional council for all the work they've done. Uh, it has really added so much, but this governor has done just a, a huge amount of work for this region. Fast forward to photonics. Uh, we are here. The TAP facility is going to be a world-class facility. Uh, uh, on Semiconductor is a great site for that. Uh, packaging is one of our core strengths here, and this TAP facility is going to be tremendous. There is at least 96 to $100 million of very highly specialized tools that, that are on the way when this opens up uh, later on in 2017 uh, that I believe will be a center not only for uh, packaging, semiconductor industry, wafers, but also for research and so many other uh, applications here. It will draw great talent. It will draw even more great brain power to what we have already. And in the end, I think you're going to see this is going to be a huge part uh, of the future economic increase that we see. But uh, I'm going to close by saying this. Uh, having spent four years with this governor, traveling around the state, seeing what he's done, the attention that, that he has paid this community, I don't think sometimes we appreciate what has been done. Uh, and this money that he is investing in time and time again, and today he comes from Buffalo, and I think it's a $325-plus million investment to, for GM plants in Buffalo made today. 
And that just, it, to me, it is indicative of what he has done. I want to thank him personally, not only as a colleague, but as a friend, and thank him for what he's doing for this region. And today is a great day to celebrate. It really is because it is here, and I, I can't wait for the ribbon cutting uh, at, on Semiconductor. Ed White and I toured that a while back. It is a fabulous facility. It's an Eastman Business Park. It's what we uh, have focused on and what the regional council has focused on for the last several years. And, and today really is a culmination of a lot of hard work by a lot of people. And, you know, the very last thing I would say is we have been given this, this great opportunity, these great investments. It is up to this region, this community, to work as a team, to align as a team, and maximize these investments. And if we do, uh, we're going to catch the same fever that we see 60 miles uh, to the west in Buffalo, uh, because we do have our Buffalo billion. It is here. So, Governor, thank you very much for your investment and all your support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman Duffy. And at this time, I would like to uh, invite the comments of uh, Governor Cuomo, who I have the pleasure and honor of working for. Uh, uh, Governor Cuomo. Thank you. First, I'm so proud of uh, Chairman Majori. I knew him when he was just a young man starting out. Let's give the chairman a big round of applause and thank him for his leadership. And uh, to all the, all the members of the board, I want to thank you all very, very much uh, for your good work. Uh, to uh, Bob Duffy, I miss him every day. Uh, he was a great asset for Rochester when he served as mayor, and he was an even uh, better asset for Rochester when he was lieutenant governor. He did an extraordinary job, and he still gets up every day uh, working for the Finger Lakes region. Let's give him a round of applause, Bob Duffy. Howard Zemsky for the, uh, uh, his leadership at ESD, but also a great job on this site selection committee. It was a big decision. Uh, it was not an easy decision. There was a lot of discussion back and forth, but uh, the rigor of the analysis really showed, and congratulations on the decision and how you reached it. Thank Howard you. Zemsky. We have Congresswoman uh, Slaughter, who, uh, without her advocacy on the federal level, I think it's fair to say we wouldn't be here today. And we all understand that, and we all thank you very much, Congresswoman Slaughter. <laughs> and to uh, Mayor Warren and to County Executive Denalfo and my colleagues from uh, Albany, uh, Joe Fairweather Ryder, uh, Roback, <laughs> pleasure to be with you. Senator Funky, pleasure to be with you. Assemblyman Lawrence, pleasure to be with you. Uh, Rich Toby from ESD, the whole team. Uh, this is an exciting day. And uh, I think if you take, the, take a half a step back, uh, you see why it's, it really portends well for the future. Uh, Rochester, Finger Lakes, upstate New York, uh, had a, a bad period at the end of the manufacturing era when uh, it was about cheap manufacturing, and we didn't compete in cheap manufacturing. And the companies moved overseas because they could get labor elsewhere cheaper, uh, and we paid the price in upstate New York. We also didn't help the process. A lot of the practices about the state of New York actually accelerated the exit, high taxes, anti-business environment in the state of New York actually accelerated businesses and people leaving. Uh, we understand that, and that went on for many, many years. Uh, we're now on the other side of that curve because, as uh, Bob Duffy said, New York realized our mistakes. Uh, we went to Albany. We brought spending down. We brought taxes down to at historic lows all across the state. Our manufacturing tax in this state is now zero. Uh, we brought down personal income tax, brought down corporate tax. Literally, every New Yorker pays lower taxes today than they did five years ago. Uh, so we cleaned up our own house um, and uh, became more inviting for business. But what today says is the economic cycle is now turning back towards us, right? At one time, businesses needed cheap labor, and we lost that competition because we can't compete. Overseas companies could provide labor cheaper than we could. Yeah, but now those companies are coming back. Why? Because, first of all, they learned that you get what you pay for, and uh, when you pay for cheap labor, that's exactly what you get. 
But this is no longer the manufacturing economy, this is the advanced manufacturing economy. Because the manufacturing economy, the people who are getting those jobs are not immigrants, they're robots, right? That's technology. We were just in a General Motors plant, as Bob mentioned, $330 million investment, the engine of tomorrow. You walk through the plant, uh, it's amazing how few people are actually operating the plant. And if there was a, a classic manufacturing task, it was engine building, right? Uh, that plant um, has been in New York for a very long time, uh, but uh, at one time it was all about people. And now it's all about machines. They do everything. They pick it up, they process it, they put it down, they wrap it, they put a bow on it, they send a little personal note. Uh, it's amazing. So now it's not about manufacturing, it's not about cheap labor, it's about this. It's about brain power. It's about innovation. It's about marriages with institutions of higher learning. And it's about developing that technology out of R&D and educational facilities and quickly applying it to a commercial transaction. That's where New York excels. And that's where we are actually ahead of the curve. And in a, a, a really beautiful irony, Rochester goes back to what made Rochester, Rochester in the first place, right? That engineering ability, uh, that, that technology that made RIT, that made Kodak, that made Bausch & Lomb, that made Xerox, that is the photonics industry today and the photonics industry tomorrow. And it is coming right back to where it began. And now, rather than optics, it's photonics. The future is in fiber optics. The only question is how fast and how far it goes. Because everyone says that it is the transmission source of the future. And Rochester is there just the way they were there 60, 70 years ago at the beginning of the new technology. You have the skills, you have the workforce, you have the institutions of higher learning, and we took care of the negatives that the state brought. We brought the taxes down. We're as pro-business a state as you're going to find anywhere in the nation. I said to Department of Defense when this competition started with AIM Photonics, Whatever this state has to do, we will do, and we will do it faster than any other state in the country. And you have my personal word on that. And Mr. Cipolla. Uh, you can repeat that again. So uh, we are entrepreneurial, we are energetic, uh, and we have the natural skills and assets to make this industry uh, not just an industry that works for Rochester and New York, but literally an industry that can help this entire nation. Uh, so it is very, very exciting. Uh, and for so many years, we had the economic tide against us. But that tide has turned, and now that economic tide is with us. Uh, and I believe uh, if we do what we need to do here, the future is ours. We are there at the ground floor. $600 million investment, that is a lot of money. Uh, but it takes money to make money, and I will bet on Rochester any day of the week, and that's why this is a smart investment for the state. It's going to work. It is already working, uh, and it is now up to us. Uh, there are no more excuses. It is now just up to us. If we do what New Yorkers do, if we work together, if we have a shared goal, if we all pull in the same direction, you're going to see a rapid rise of Rochester uh, that I think is going to energize all of upstate. So it's just my pleasure to be part of it. Congratulations to all of you uh, because you made today happen. So congratulations. Thank you, Governor Cuomo. Thank you for your leadership on this.
and uh, your vision for seeing the importance of this project in the future of Rochester. Thank you.